Hey everyone, welcome to another Will I Buy It? In this video I'm going to be talking about all the new makeup releases from the past two weeks. I'm going to tell you if I want to buy them or maybe not. Maybe I'm not interested at all. And I would love to hear from you in the comments what you think about these new releases. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. So if you haven't been on my channel before, my name is Marley and I love making YouTube videos about makeup and beauty. I love doing looks, swatches, reviews, will I buy videos, declutters, all that kind of stuff. So if that sounds good to you, then don't forget to subscribe. I usually upload about two to three videos a week and I would love to see you again on my channel. So I said we had a lot of things to talk about, but I actually feel like makeup releases are kind of slowing down. I feel like less is released, brands kind of took a step back and aren't releasing as much. And I think this might go on for a little while, maybe until summer collections, for now, I feel like everything is slowing down just a little bit. Maybe it's because of the situation in the world right now. I'm not too sad about it because I don't mind when I don't want to buy any makeup because that saves me a lot of money. Kind of happy about that when that happens, when I'm not even like really pulled in and have to talk myself out of things. Of course, there are a few things on my wish list, but really not a lot. So I actually think that these episodes are gonna be a little bit shorter for the coming months, maybe, but that's totally fine. I can imagine in general that people are buying less makeup. And before we really get into the new releases, this makeup look I filmed with Menagerie cosmetic singles that I got. Probably it will be up in a few days. So keep your eyes open for that if you're interested in this makeup look. And everything I read from, everything I get my information from, like the Instagram pages, I always link below. So if you're interested to see where I get this news from, you can always check my description box. This time I actually remembered to scooch to the side. I'm proud of myself. So the first thing we have to talk about is a new Laneige treatment balm. And it's like a daily lip treatment, so it's not like for at night, what they usually have. And it's going to be $25 and it's pina colada scented with coconut oil and everything. I'm not really interested in this, like the scent doesn't sound really appealing to me. Maybe if you really love coconut scented things then this will be for you, but that's not really my thing. And also I don't really feel like I need a daily lip treatment like this at this moment. I still have my Laneige lip sleeping mask and that I just use all throughout the day and I'm completely fine with using that like that. I don't feel like I really need a glittery coconutty lip treatment right now. I think if I would purchase anything from Laneige I would probably just repurchase the lip sleeping mask. I don't feel really attracted to this but I can... But I can imagine if you're really into coconut, then you will like this. Then we have this Dior Forever Natural Bronze. I think it's available now and it's 51 euros and 77 cents. And now it's on sale for 38 euros and 83 cents at Douglas. If you don't know, Douglas is like, at least in the Netherlands, is a place where you get your perfume, your skincare, your makeup. It's kind of more luxury, so you don't really have a lot of drugstore products there. They re have a really nice online shop and they usually have a store in like every city. So I guess for Europeans, this is on sale. It might not be anymore, but at least in the Netherlands, Douglas has a lot of sales. Like often they have 25% all makeup. So if you're in Europe, if you have a Douglas close by and you want to try this bronzer, keep an eye out for that. I'm not really interested in trying a matte bronzer and also not interested in trying a really expensive bronzer right now. I just don't really feel attracted to this. I do feel like I'm getting more and more into bronzer, but when that happens, it's kind of more specific, maybe more summery, maybe more shiny. Some, there has to be something special about it that pulls me in and I, and I don't feel like this bronzer really has that special quality for me. Maybe it's really great quality, maybe it will get really good reviews, but I'm not really interested in this right now. Then we have this new collection by Trixie Cosmetics and it's called Back to the Fuchsia. Is that how you say it in English? Fuchsia? That's how I would 
pronounce it. But we have, I think, some lip gloss, some shimmers for the eyes and a blush palette trio. So the glosses and the sparkles, not interested in that. I don't know, doesn't really look too appealing to me. Maybe if this would get like the best reviews ever that I would be slightly interesting. But this is not really like my aesthetic, I would say. The blush trio, I do like the look of those blushes, like the more berry one, the pinky berry one and the more lilac one. I do think those look nice, but then that highlighter, it's kind of like a gray lilac and I don't think I would ever wear this. I don't, this wouldn't be bearable for me. I wouldn't really have a place for this in my collection. And then I wouldn't want a trio with one shade that I never use. So I guess it's kind of like a cute collection. It has a cute aesthetic, but it's not really like my aesthetic and nothing here really speaks to me enough to like research it more if it would be something for me. This release I think is quite exciting. We have the new eyeshadow palette Pastel Dreams by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So I think they had like a pastel single eyeshadow bundle somewhere last year. It was really popular and then they decided to make it into a palette. But I do think they changed the shades up a little bit to make it not exactly the same. If I hadn't bought so many pastel palettes, like I've bought so many pastel palettes in the last month. Well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I bought the Ice Cream Dream palette. I bought the pastel palette by Artist Couture. So I feel like I just have the pastel shades, the pastel eyeshadows that I need. And this wouldn't add enough to justify the price because it would be high shipping, high customs, and it's already $54, which is quite pricey. So I can't justify getting this, although I think it looks really cute. I think this color story is really nice. It looks kind of like pastel, but brighter. I think it looks like a nice palette if you are into pastels, but you don't really have anything yet in your collection, then I'm sure it's gonna be nice quality because I really like Give Me Glow quality. If I hadn't bought all those other things, I would probably be interested in this, but now it would just be redundant in my collection and then I can't justify spending the money on this. I feel like they're just a little bit late with this release. I feel like there is quite a small period of time that consumers are interested in pastel and that's usually the beginning of spring. Then people are really gonna be looking for those types of palettes. And then if you release something in April, you're gonna be a bit too late because then people already decided and people already bought their pastel palette. I just don't think that people are really gonna be buying multiple pastel palettes. So I don't know, I just feel like at least for me, their timing isn't perfect. Even though I like this color story and I'm sure if I would have it, I would use it, I would like it. I'm not gonna buy it. Then we have this new collaboration with Morphe brushes and Avani. This palette is like really colorful. It has some dark shades, some bright shades. I guess there's some bronzers, lipstick, glosses, just a bit of everything. I'm not interested in Morphe ever. And this just looks jumbled. It looks kind of chaotic and it doesn't really have a color story. It doesn't really pull me in. I'm just generally not interested in Morphe. I don't think there's anything that they can release that would really make me want to buy from them. There's just something about this brand that makes me go like, ah, maybe not. That makes me not want to buy their releases before I've even seen them. I just don't really trust the quality of Morphe. I don't know, what I've heard about them is that the quality isn't the greatest. Like some people think it's mediocre and then some people think it's really bad. And that doesn't really make me want to buy it. So nothing in this collection really speaks to me. Even if I would buy from Morphe, I wouldn't really be inclined to buy this. Because for me to buy something, there has to be some special color story, special packaging. Something that really pulls me in. And I don't feel like this collection has that. I just don't care about Morphe. And I don't know... Do people still care about Morphe? Are there still people who buy a lot from them? I guess there are, but I feel like they used to be way, way bigger on YouTube. I just never hear anything positive about them personally. Then the Too Faced Teddy Bear collection is now, what is it? It's like 
revealed further like they showed pictures before but now they're showing pictures again it will be available April 19th I don't know this just looks like what Too Faced always does these pictures don't make me more interested than I was and I wasn't interested at all I just don't really care about this brand nowadays I just feel like they have a really weird aesthetic I just feel like they're stuck doing the same thing the same colors I feel like this palette we've seen so many times from them and there are also other brands who brought out palettes like this. I already told you that I thought it looked a little bit similar to the Corda Rosa from Sigma. I don't know, this whole theme with the teddy bear, it doesn't really speak to me. I think it's a, it's a little bit weird and a little bit inappropriate. I'm just not interested in this collection and in this brand at all. I just think this is a weird brand. Like when I was younger, I was really interested in them and I got the chocolate bar palette and I thought it was so cute. And I just feel like they've kind of fallen off. Of course, they've had a lot of drama as well. I don't really remember exactly what it was all about, but that also made me not really want buy from them anymore i feel like they would have to do something really special for me to want to buy from them again and this is not it these swatches it just looks really basic like a basic neutral palette with a pop of pink it's just nothing special and then i don't know what this swatch it is is it like the bronzer it looks really light and golden more like a highlight for dark skin tones this is not something i would wear then we have the new the deluxe blending brush set by sigma they have a lot of new brushes and it's gonna be 122 dollars i've never tried a brush from sigma and i don't know i believe that they are good but they are a little bit more expensive than i usually spend on brushes i'm not really like a brush fanatic for me, they are just really practical. Like, I don't need any more brushes than are necessary. I don't really get interested in new brush releases. I know there are some people who are so into brushes and then when there's a new brush collection, they buy it just because they wanna try it. I'm not really that interested in brushes. It's a bit like being interested in concealer or something for me. It's not really like anything different actually. It's not something special it's not like it's gonna have a really special different finish they all have the same purpose i don't know i i'm always just more into colorful cosmetics like different types of blushes eyeshadow lipstick just playing with color and eyeshadow brushes aren't really like a part of that so i'm not really interested i might try sigma sometime because i've heard very good things about them but they're a little bit above my budget when it comes to spending money on brushes i'm just not really used to doing that i'm not interested enough to spend a lot of money on brushes so that's just my personal opinion about brushes of course i can totally understand if you're really interested in this if they are good quality sure then we have two new kits from pat mcgrath they have the dark star kit and the lust kit and i don't know how much they will be but the dark star kit has ultraviolet blue pigment a multi-dimensional holographic gloss an extreme black perma gel ultra glide eye pencil then we also have the Lust Kit with two new lipstick shades in Blood and Rose Desire and with a microfine glitter and final gloss. I can't really say much about this until I know the price, but at first glance I'm not really interested in this. I don't really like the idea of a kit with different types of products put together like i would rather choose what i buy i would rather just choose my own lipstick shade choose my own eyeshadow shade choose my own lip gloss shade and really get what i like always when i see like makeup products put together by the brand there's always something that i would switch out something i don't like and then it's already not really worth the money so i'm not really a fan of this concept in general and i think it's gonna be too expensive for me for sure i guess it's an easy way to make money for brands just put things together make it a little bit cheaper but make everyone end up buying stuff that they don't actually want or need i don't know there's just nothing about this that pulls me in i just don't like the concept i'm not really a fan of this brand and the prices i've never tried anything but it's so expensive i'm like how can it be worth that price like if you have 
products from Pat McGrath and you love it, you're really into it, I can totally understand, but I do feel like a lot of this brand is just the feel and the aesthetic and how luxurious it is, but it's not really like justified in any other way that it is so expensive. That's just the feelings of someone who hasn't tried the brand, so take it with a grain of salt, but I don't think I'm gonna be buying anything from Pat McGrath real soon. Like sometimes I'm like, maybe I should try it. But then I hear a review of someone who's like, it's not worth it. And they say like, indie brands have better eyeshadows. And then I'm like, I'd rather buy the eyeshadows that I want from indie brands that are cheaper. So I'm always a little bit on the fence about this brand. But at this point, I'm like, I don't wanna try anything. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Never say never. Then we have the new Lizzie McGuire and Colourpop collaboration. I guess it looks cute, but on the other hand, it doesn't look like anything special. I watched a few episodes here and there of Lizzie McGuire. Never really fell in love with the show. I wasn't really like a fan. And I feel like with this collaboration, this is really geared towards the fans of the show. I guess the palette has kind of a cute color story, but it's a little bit too light and pastel. I don't know why they kept doing this, but a lot of times with Colourpop collabs, they come out with these really light eyeshadow palettes with really light colors that don't suit a lot of skin tones. This will only work for fair skin tones. And I don't really get why they do that. And... These glasses don't really look interesting. These blushes don't really look interesting. It just doesn't pull me in because I'm not a fan. And this palette is just too light, too pastel. It kind of makes me think of that Sailor Moon collaboration that they did. It was also really lightly pigmented. And I also believe that quality wasn't the best. I don't know. I just feel like they're kind of missing the mark with this one. But maybe it will be really successful. I don't know if this was already released, if it was sold out or anything. I'm not really like in the loop. It's like, it looks cute at first glance, but it wouldn't really be practical. And it's nothing special for the Colourpop collection. I feel like they're doing a lot of these types of palettes. So I'm gonna be skipping on that one for sure. Then we have these face palettes by Wayne Goss. I'm not really interested in this brand. There's just something about this brand that makes me feel like it's not really on trend like it's more for like older ladies that like to spend some more money on makeup and just use a few products like it seems very practical functional luxurious but it's not something that i'm really interested in when it comes to like brand aesthetic i personally kind of like the idea of having these two shades together like the cool toned one and the warm toned one because i personally really like mixing together a cool tone shade with a warm tone shade because then i can kind of customize my bronzer shade and make it a little bit more cool toned because i personally really like a cool toned bronzer and i don't come across a lot of bronzers that are the shades that i would want so then i can kind of make them more cool so i actually don't hate the idea of this but nothing really pulls me in i don't think it's special enough i'm not really interested in the brand i feel like if a brand i was usually very interested in would bring out something like this i might check it out i also don't know how expensive this is gonna be i'm guessing it's gonna be quite expensive and quite a lot of product it's just not enough to pull me in and to make me want to buy it for now his brand is just not really my type of brand or my type of aesthetic so i'm gonna leave it then we have these new fenty beauty ease drop blurring skin tint if i would wear foundation then i would probably try this because this sounds and looks very nice but I'm not the type of person to wear this kind of product. It's an instant blurring skin tint, buildable light to medium long wear coverage, hydrating diffused effect. It sounds very good. Like if I would be interested in trying such a product, I would definitely buy this. I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in this, especially if you're more into this light natural finish on the skin. I thought it was an interesting release. Usually I don't really talk about foundation because I never wear it, but this looks very nice. Then we have these new cheek duos by Artist Couture and they are called the Love Sprung Cheek Duos. We have a lighter one and a darker one. When I first saw these, I was slightly intrigued. I was a little bit interested, but I don't know. I'm a bit confused. I'm not really sure what the colors are gonna be like. Sometimes they look very light. Sometimes they look a bit more dark. And I feel like 
it's not gonna be worth the money. It's not gonna be worth paying shipping, paying customs, and they are a little bit on the expensive side. Not like extremely expensive, but also not affordable. If I would buy any of the two, then I would definitely go for the lighter one. But I also feel like I don't really get that middle shade. I don't really know what kind of color that would be. I don't think it would be really flattering on me. So then I would only have two shades I would really wear. And then I think I would rather just turn to the single blushes that I have or buy something else, maybe buy a duo. I don't know, there's just something about it that makes me kind of interested. I'm kind of intrigued, but I know I shouldn't buy this. Then we have these new eye primers by Juvia's Place. There are three shades, they are $12 each. Each You have a light, a medium and a dark shade. I think I read somewhere that these were really like creamy and quite thick. And I know that doesn't work on my oily eyelids. I guess it's an interesting release, but I do, just don't think it's gonna keep my eyeshadow in place with the type of eyelids that I have. I think it's a good release for them, but I'm not interested in this. Then we have this new Nine Pants by Huda Beauty. I feel like she's just doing the same thing. It doesn't look interesting. It doesn't look like anything new. It doesn't look like anything revolutionary. It's just the same thing over and over again. Maybe she should try some different type of format to kind of mix it up. When I saw this, I was just kind of like, again, are we doing this again? Haven't we done this so many times already? It makes me kind of think of Colourpop, but then a lot more expensive. Yeah, I don't know. We have kind of like an orangey one, a more mauve neutrally one, and then a more yellow undertoned one with a pop of yellow. I don't know, man. I just... I know it's not exactly the same, but still it feels like it has already been done. So I'm not gonna be picking up any of this. Then we have this new House of Siage Disney collaboration. We have a Disney collaboration every week, it seems. I don't know, it looks not really interesting, it's really expensive. I feel like maybe if you're really into Disney you would try this, but I'm not really that much... I'm not really that much into Disney per se. Like some of the things I really like, like the Disney princesses, if you do a collection with that, I would be more inclined to buy it. But this with Mickey and Minnie Mouse, not really that interested, especially for this price. So this is not gonna be it for me. Not really interested in this. Then we have a new eyeshadow palette for spring by Clarity Cosmetics. We have some nice swatches. It looks like quite a nice palette, but it doesn't look like the colors that would look good on me. Like those really warm greens. When greens even lean a little bit warm, I just look sick. I don't look good in greens. It just doesn't go with my skin tone. Then we have like kind of like a yellowy gold and an orangey shade. This is just not gonna work for me and I do like the idea of this palette. I do think it looks really cute. I like the swatches that they show. If this would look good on me, maybe I would have bought it, but I just know I will not feel pretty with these eyeshadows on my eyes. So I'm gonna skip on this one, even though I think it's a really nice, interesting release. It also has five duochromes, so that's nice. And then let's, <laughs> let's talk about this NYX Cosmetics and Tetris collaboration. I don't know what they were thinking with this. I don't know where they were going with this. Like you can you can do so many fun things with Tetris, but then they make this huge ass big ass eyeshadow palette with so many repeat shades. Why? Why would you do this? Why would you make it like this? You could you could have made it like really small and cute or maybe make a few different ones in different shapes. Like with this, with a Tetris collaboration, I feel like you are allowed to do like some weird shapes. And then they do this big palette with 80 shades. I feel like they really missed the mark. They could have done something so fun and then they did this. I mean, that palette is just what? What were they thinking? I also feel like once a palette becomes really, really big, like it crosses a certain line. The quality is going down. You don't get as much value for your money. It's like repeat shade, less quality. This isn't gonna be worth the money. It's gonna be $45. I'm not gonna spend that money on a palette that looks like this. It's so big, like... I don't know what they were thinking. They could have done something so fun. And I'm not even really interested in Tetris. I never really played it, but this is just a bit of a fail in my eyes. Then we have this new Zueva Cosmetics Collection. Together we shine. We have a six pen, we have a ten pen, and then kind of like a face palette. 
this just looks like what they've done so many times already it just doesn't look interesting it's just too neutral mid-toned all have kind of like the same shades same tones it's kind of like warm leaning that also doesn't make it really interesting to me i haven't really tried this Weva eyeshadow formula i had a palette by them once but it was really old i don't know if it's like comparable to this but this i just feel like they could have done something more something a bit more interesting it just looks kind of boring and mid-toned and like nothing really special to me then we have this new samantha march and ofra collaboration this is like round two and it's called the Lives a Draft collection, I believe. And we have the Lives a Draft mini mix palette. And then we have a lip gloss trio and that was it. I have mixed feelings about this. I really like Samantha. I really like her channel. I can really see how this fits with her. I think combination of these colors is really nice. They look like very nice products. The eyeshadow quality of Ofra doesn't really pull me in. But I do like the look of those cheek shades. It's like, I get it, but I would have wished that they didn't put everything together in one palette. I would have preferred to, for example, just buy a cheek trio and then just buy an eyeshadow palette. I don't know, I get it for her, but I just feel like this packaging is just not what I would prefer. And I think the eyeshadows are gonna be a bit too satiny. Like, the shimmers aren't gonna be special enough for me to justify buying this. And I feel like it's just going to be a little bit too bulky. I guess the price is kind of fair. Like I do think it's a good price. Like $39 for the palette. And usually you can get Ofra on a discount. I'm just a little bit on the fence. I think you can notice. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how I feel. Like I get it. But it's just, just not it for me. I don't think I'm going to buy this. It's just... The eyeshadows are a bit too toned down, I feel. And then I don't like the combination with everything together in one palette. I think I'm gonna skip on this. But I am really happy for Samantha that she got another collab. Like, this is amazing. This is great. And I, and I think it's great that she did something that she wanted to do. That she did something that's like her style, her aesthetic. Like, a combination of these nudes and these purples. It looks really nice, but I don't think it's gonna be like functional or practical it's just not gonna add enough to my collection so i'm gonna skip on this I'm, I'm just on the fence i'm not entirely sure how i feel about it just yet then we have this new linda Hallberg cosmetics velvet couture liquid lipsticks they are a velvety soft semi-matte liquid lipstick we have five shades a light nude a brownie nude a pink a bit more of a berry one and an orangey one i think it looks really interesting but i'm not really interested in trying this maybe if i would see really good reviews because the price is a little bit it's a little bit higher than what i would usually spend on lip products so i like the idea of this i think the swatches look nice they have some really nice colors but i'm not interested enough to justify paying that price but if I see a video or something, I will probably check it out. Right now, it's a no. I don't know if I talked about this palette just yet. Like, I'm not sure. This is the Game Beauty Fantasy palette. I don't think I've talked about it, but I'm not 100% sure. But it's kind of like a mix of pastels and some darker blues. I think it looks cute. I like the color story. I like this combination of colors. But there's something about this brand or this color combination of the pack or the packaging that doesn't make me want to buy it just yet. Maybe if I would see really positive reviews in the future of this brand, I would keep an eye out a little bit more. But right now, I'm just not that interested yet. I feel like my pastel needs have been fulfilled. I bought what I wanted, I have what I wanted. And whenever I see more pastel palettes right now, I don't feel like I need it. I just think I'm gonna skip all of those for now. I just feel like I have enough and I'm not gonna be wearing them all year around. That's not really what I'm like. I usually get really into pastel eyeshadow in like spring, early summer, and then I move on to other makeup styles. I just really like adapting my makeup to the seasons. That's not something I feel like you have to do, but I just really like that. So, I think for the few months that I'm gonna wear it, I definitely have enough. So I'm gonna be skipping on this one. So those were all the new releases. That was everything for today's video. Once again, I don't feel like I want a lot of these products. 
I don't feel like I'm gonna add any of these really to my wish list. I'm just waiting for the right launch to really pull me in. I just want to feel that excitement again and I don't feel that with any of these products like I might watch a review here and there but I'm not like I'm gonna buy that for sure right now and I feel like that's totally fine. There will be another launch, there will be another product that really pulls me in but that's just not what's happening now. So let me know in the comments how you feel about these new releases. I always love chatting with you about the new releases. Maybe you have some other feelings. Maybe you can make me see some of these new releases in a different light. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe. And then I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.